In high school, one of my favorite classes was chemistry because that was the place where I got to light things on fire. And pivoting away from chemistry to cooking turned out to be a great move. I still get to light things on fire, but at much lower stakes. And in fact, fire isn't just fun. It can make food taste great too. You've probably benefited from foods that have been cooked with fire. Some obvious examples are grilled things or something that was stir fried in a wok. Some less obvious examples could be the sauce on a dessert or maybe the aroma of your cocktail. Using a flame instead of say, sauteing, baking, or roasting is just a different way to change the flavor of your food. Cooking with fire changes the flavor molecules in a food to create new ones. And it's a subtle but really effective way to change the flavor of what you're preparing. The fuel for these fires is fat, oil, or alcohol. So let's look at how we can ignite them safely and see what changes they bring. We'll start with grilling. You know how food tastes different when it's been grilled rather than seared or sauteed? It's the flare-ups that are responsible for some of that difference. Flare-ups, big or small, happen when juices fall from the food that you're grilling. They'll hit either the hot coals if you're cooking on charcoal or the metal baffles that protect the flame on a gas grill. When this happens, water in those juices turns to steam really rapidly. As that steam expands, it carries tiny droplets of oil or fat into the air above the coals those droplets will ignite and that's a flare up. Now, when this happens, we're creating a lot of new flavor compounds and they will condense on the food, depositing grill flavor on whatever it is we're cooking. Let's have a look at Steve Dunn's grilled chicken thighs with gochujang to see how we can control flare ups. We start by trimming the chicken thighs to remove excess fat and skin. This limits the amount of fat that can drip on the coals during cooking. Instead of adding oil via a marinade, I'm gonna smear both sides of the chicken with a sticky paste made from gochujang, soy sauce, garlic, sugar, and salt. We set up our grill to have two sides, a hot side and a cool side. The chicken's gonna start on the cool side where it cooks through gently. Any juices that get squeezed out, they're not gonna hit the coals to create flare ups. After that chicken hits 185 degrees, we'll move it over to the hot side. At this point, most of the fat has rendered off. The juices that hit the coals, they're gonna create small flare-ups that are gonna give that chicken just that hint of grill flavor rather than making it taste burnt, which is exactly what we want. Controlling the amount of fat is the key to great grill flavor. If you're cooking something lean like chicken breasts or vegetables, you can use a mop or a marinade to incorporate a little bit of fat to make sure that you're getting the flare-ups you need. And if you get a large flare-up, don't worry about it. Just get in there, move the food around to keep it from charring. This chicken has crispy, well-rendered skin. That gochujang paste, it's caramelized a little bit. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's savory. And overlaid over all of that is the flavors from the flare-up. We're talking a little bit of smoke and a hint of pleasant bitterness. One final note, when you're grilling, be safe. If you do have a fire, you can smother the flames on a charcoal grill by putting the lid on and closing the top and bottom vents. On a gas grill, shut off the gas. Now, let's see what flames can do for our food in the kitchen. When cooking indoors, flames can be used to bring a lot of great flavor too. Wok hay, the flavor created when food is stir fried in a wok over a large open fire is prized in many stir fries. It's described as charred, grill-like, or savory. Flambeing is another great way to use fire indoors to create great flavor. Unlike flare-ups on a grill or the pops of flame you get when stir frying in a wok, the fuel for a flambe isn't oil or fat, but alcohol. The alcohol is gently warmed until it vaporizes and that vapor, it's ignited with a match. Rather than tiny licks of flame, we get a sustained fire. And while that fire burns, new flavor compounds are created. Let's take a look. Years ago, I developed a recipe for French style pork chops with apples and calvados. And the sauce for that recipe relies on a flambe. It starts with browning bacon. While we're waiting on the bacon, let's talk about safety during flambéing. You wanna make sure that there aren't any drafts that could blow that flame around. This means shutting any windows, turning off any fans or hoods. If you've got long hair, tie it back. If you're wearing long sleeves, push them up. And finally, to make sure that you're in control of the ignition, if you're using a gas stove, shut off the stove and use a long match to light that fire. This is gonna take five to seven minutes to brown and then I'll add some shallots. Bacon's brown, time for the shallots. And along with those shallots, I've got some salt and a pinch of nutmeg. We'll let these cook for three to four minutes until they're lightly browned. 
finally, it's time to flambe. I am going to shut off the heat and I'm adding a quarter cup of the Calvados. Now, the reason I'm adding only half of the alcohol is I wanna control that fire. If I had added all of the alcohol at once, I would have gotten a fairly large flame that would have been a little bit out of control. What's happening right now besides that fire burning is any bits of food that are sitting above the flame, they're seeing a little bit of Maillard browning and that's developing flavor. Now it's time to add the rest of the Calvados. To do this safely, I'm gonna pop a lid on and that just ensures that there is no flame left in there. Sometimes the flames are small and hard to pick up. Once I'm sure that flame has been smothered, I'll add the remaining alcohol and light a match. I can hear that the flame is going, but in order to distribute that evenly, I'm gonna give this pot a swirl. These flames usually go for 30 to 60 seconds. How long your flame goes is gonna depend on your recipe and how hot the alcohol is and the ABV of the liquor you're lighting. Okay, time to finish this sauce. I've got some apple cider, chicken broth, thyme, some butter, and of course the apples. We'll bring this to a simmer. Let that mixture cook, and while that's cooking, saute pork chops in a skillet. In that same skillet, saute apple rings, and once they're lightly browned, flip them over and add some broth to help them cook through. Once that broth has cooked down, place the pork chops on top of the apples and slip that skillet into a 300 degree oven. When the pork chops are cooked through, they can come out and rest, and as they're resting, pass that sauce through a fine mesh strainer. Season that sauce with some fresh thyme, vinegar, salt, and pepper, and serve. Our pork chops and apple and that Calvados apple sauce are done. Let's have a taste. So I can already tell this pork is cooked really nicely. It's tender, it's juicy, but that sauce is the star. It's got this beautiful complexity that wouldn't have happened without that flambe. Lighting that brandy on fire removes the alcohol, which gets rid of that burn of raw alcohol, but it also creates some Maillard browning on the surface of the sauce rather than in the pan. That gives a chance for new flavors to develop and they're all folded into this sauce. It's awesome. If you're not up for flambe, here's a little sip of what fire can bring. Bartenders also use fire to change the flavor of cocktails, and this is something that's really easy to try at home. Years ago, my buddy Paul Manzelli, a bartender in the Boston area, gave me a taste of what fire can do for your cocktail. He made an old-fashioned and divided it into three glasses. The first he left ungarnished. The second he garnished with a spritz of orange oil. And the last he garnished with some flamed orange. They're all great, but this one is definitely my favorite. The first is a little bit more bourbon-y than I'd like. The second smells like oranges and it tastes good, but this last one has this complexity to it. That orange flavor, it's still present, but it's tamped down a little bit because some of that orange oil was burned off. Instead, I get the aromas of the bourbon, a hint of smoke, and just this soft, subtle orange flavor. If you wanna try this at home, here's what you need. Make your cocktail of choice. If you don't like the old fashioned, make a Manhattan or a Negroni, which is what I have here. Both are great with flamed orange. After that, grab some matches and an orange. When you're choosing an orange, make sure it's fresh. Otherwise, you won't have enough oil to do this. To check for freshness, I like to run my nail across the orange before giving it a smell. It should smell intensely of orange. A lot of folks like to use a peeler when they're making twists. What happens when you do that is as you're pressing down to pull off the zest, between the pressing motion and the bending of the peel, a lot of the oil actually gets forced out before you want it to. It's fine to do this if this entire piece is going in the drink, but if you're gonna flame the oil, you want it to stay put. To make sure that happens, you can do what my buddy Paul taught me. Rather than the peeler, he uses a paring knife and he cuts little rounds. When you're doing this, you don't really want to get a ton of the orange flesh here. We don't want to get a ton of juice in our orange. You want to just skim the pith. 
This is all you need. Next up, light your match. And you can warm the orange over the match if you want, but you'll just set the match above the rim of the glass, aim that orange down and give it a squeeze. For all its drama, fire is best when it's used subtly to tweak the flavors of your food or beverage. What's your favorite way to use fire when cooking? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, click that like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos. Go check out cooksillustrated.com for more great recipes and techniques.